Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to today's video where I'm going to be showing you a few steps and the processes of how I've drawn these really magical looking mushrooms, this little mushroom scene. This is a little bit different to what you usually see from me because I don't usually do like a whole background and a whole like piece. Usually I leave a white background with my animals. But with this, I really wanted to challenge myself and I wanted to see whether I could convey a convincing scene, including all of that background and all of that stuff that I usually avoid. I've also used a different type of paper for this portrait than I usually do. Usually I use the Fabriano Artistico paper, but this time I've used the Derwent Lightfast paper, which I'm going to do a separate review on and tell you exactly how I've got on with it in a separate video. This video is just going to focus on these lovely mushrooms. As always, I used my Polychromos coloured pencils for this, and this is actually a full tutorial over on Patreon if you want to follow along with me. There's a whole, I think it's more than six hour tutorial going through each individual step with this. But for this YouTube version, I want to tell you about the experience that I had with drawing this and also sharing some of the techniques that I've used. As I said, this isn't something that I primarily do and I haven't really done anything like this before. I've done a pan pastel background and a flat kind of black colored pencil background on a few portraits before, but this is the first time that I've actually delved into the whole world of doing all of the details in the background. I used a kind of limited palette for this. Instead of using a bunch of different greys and browns, I've actually used a lot of green and red tones to create shadows, especially in the little mushroom caps and in some of the trees that you can see that I'm drawing here in the background. What I did first of all was just put down a really light base of blue pretty much all over. I used a light ultramarine pencil and then I went over with my white pencil to kind of dilute that colour down a little bit so it wasn't quite so bright blue. And I've kind of left a few spaces where there were some of those larger trees. So you can see that red and that green tree in the background there. I left a little bit of space because I didn't want to have a blue undertone for those particular features. But for the rest of it, I just coloured in blue. I made sure that I was going in the same direction and following the kind of clouds that I could see in the sky. So working in, it was almost a diagonal uh, way to get the sky in here and for the trees and everything I just use various tones of green starting with my lighter colors so my lightest greens and then working up to my darker greens and then for the shadows and the darker areas as I said I used red rather than going in and adding any browns or anything so I tried to keep everything really nice and cohesive I didn't want to get any kind of muddy colors so that's the reason that I've used the complementary colors of the red and the green to create the shadows there before actually going in and doing any of the mushrooms, I added in these little blades of grass that you can see sitting over the top. I wanted to make sure that I added those in first because I didn't want to use a negative space method and avoid all of those little different blades of grass that were sitting over the top of the mushrooms. So instead I've added them in first and this actually turned out to be a really good way of working and I just worked the colour in between those areas of green that I had put down. If I'd have used a negative space method it would have been a very tedious task of having to keep track of all of those blades of grass so just making sure that I went around the green areas especially with the red because I didn't want the grass to turn brown it was just a really nice easy way to just add those grasses in rather than again using that negative space method. With the mushrooms here I actually used the negative space method to add in the little little I don't know what you call them but the little bits that you see on top of the mushroom. I used the negative space method and I used a light pink base first of all for this mushroom and I went around each of those little individual sections and left the paper white and then I filled in with the darker red and then slowly getting darker and darker and then finally adding on top some layers of green and I actually used a little bit of some dark indigo on top of the red here which worked really nicely to help to get that nice shadow tone. On top of that to make sure it wasn't looking too blue I actually went over with some dark red and more of those red tones just to help to make sure that it was a red tone coming through and not a cooler blue tone coming through. For those little white bits on top of the mushroom, I then went in with a lighter pencil. I think I went in with an ivory pencil and then I used some raw umber and some a bit more of like a browny tone pencil to give them a little bit more texture and a little bit more depth. 
with the larger mushroom here you can kind of see my process a little bit more I'm adding in the top red part because this main mushroom that you can see here all you can see is the gills on the underside which was a really fun process to try and create but I added in that red and I put in a cinnamon base and then I went in with some orange and then I've added in red and slowly got darker with those darker colours the gills here, as I said, was one of the most fun parts of this entire portrait. You can see what I'm doing first of all, I've kind of outlined the gills, some of the darker ones, with some heavier pressure on a brown pencil. And then I've used a lighter pressure to add in the gills further along, um, before they kind of really disappear towards the edges. So the main concentration of the darker gills is in the centre and then it slowly gets to kind of nothing around the outside and that's going to help to convey that kind of shape of the mushroom. After I'd added in those initial gills then I went in with my base of some ivory and then I'm just slowly darkening each of the gills using some red tones. I'm also using some raw umber which I found was a really lovely colour to add in here and I've also used some dark indigo and some more of the sort of mid-tone pinks as well throughout here. And you can see it gives a really nice soft subtle effect i was going to leave it as just pinks and browns for the underside here mainly adding in pinks because you've got the reflection of the other mushrooms surrounding if there weren't any other mushrooms surrounding i probably would have added in a few more greens because you'd probably have some more grass reflected in that underside but along with those pinks and browns i also added in some blue and that blue i don't know it just really helped give this mushroom a lot more structure and it just made it look a whole lot more i don't know it was just something about the blue tone that i added in it was just like this is amazing so then mo focusing on to the other mushrooms this one beside it on the right was a lot darker so i added in a lot more of the green and the blue tones to help with that shadow and I'm using that little trick of adding in some blue into the, the stem of the mushroom as well. I don't know, it, it just gave it a whole nother dimension and I'm really pleased that I made that kind of connection in my brain to add in a little bit of the lighter blue through there. It just really helps give it some luminance. Just going back to the gills on that main mushroom, um, you can really see how having those stronger ones in the middle and then disappearing around the edges and not being so defined with that detail really helps to create that kind of flat disc shape of the mushroom cup. Um, so when you're doing stuff like that, what you want to do is make sure that the main bit of detail that is at the forefront that is kind of closest to you is the most detailed and then it gets less detailed as you go around the other areas. You can see the negative space process in action once again of going around each of those little white sections and then I'm filling in all of the area of the red with this base of pink and I'm also leaving a little patch of the paper white which is where you've got the main highlight of the mushroom which is where I'm going to add a little bit of blue and I will add in some pinks and everything but I'm getting the darker tones in of the mushrooms first of all. Leaving the paper white and the highlight like this and getting the darker tones in just allows you to then go back in and readjust everything. So if I was to go in and do the lighter sections first, I'd probably find that I'd have to go back and readjust those lighter sections. Whereas getting in the darker sections and getting it as dark as I really want it to be, I don't have to then go back and work on previous areas that I've already worked on. I can just do it the once. So it's kind of saving a little bit of time um, rather than having to do everything twice. But you can see I'm using the blue and a little bit of green onto the underside of the mushroom cup on this one to get that nice dark shadow. I feel like if I'd have used browns to get that, that shadow in, it would have ended up looking quite muddy. But using those blues and the greens, because I've got all those blues and greens in the background as well, just really ties everything together and I don't get that muddy effect. So I've avoided that muddiness by just using the colours that I had to hand and using my knowledge of colour theory and complementary colours to try and create some really nice shadows. The backgrounds and the mushrooms were actually the easiest part of this. I thought the mushrooms were going to be the harder part because you've got all of those little individual details that you need to pick out on the mushroom cap. But the hardest part for me was actually getting all of the leaves 
down in the foreground because I didn't want to draw too much attention to those leaves and take away attention from the main mushrooms in that middle ground. For the leaves, I employed the same tactic as I did for the mushrooms and as I always do for my coloured pencil drawings and that is to start with the lightest colour, flesh out all of the shapes and everything that I can see in there, add in any darker details like any veins throughout the leaves or any really prominent shadows that I feel are going to get lost if I add in the layers like I usually would and then just following through using those lighter colours and then slowly working up to the darker colours. And then I slowly formed the shape of each individual leaf, working one section at a time. I like to work like this because I find if I work on too big a section, I get a little bit lost and then I forget to add in details or I add the details in the wrong place. So I like to work on each individual little thing as it comes. I just find it a lot easier to work that way. But if you find it easier to work on larger clumps, then obviously go ahead and work in larger clumps. But for me, working on little individual details like this is the way forward. It's, it's just so much more of a, like a simpler process and then I can kind of compartmentalise different things as well. You can see the structure of the leaf on this main one coming together. So I've put down a base of cinnamon and then I've used an orange and then I'm going in with some Venetian red and some of the darker red, some dark red and I think I used a little bit of scarlet red which I used for the mushroom caps as well but I want the main kind of colour that was emanating through from these leaves was an orange tone so I wanted to make sure there was a lot of orange through there and not too much red if I added too much red I feel like it would probably be competing too much with the mushroom caps so I wanted to make sure that there was that clear distinction between the mushroom caps, red and any reds that were shown in the leaves. So the mushrooms I used a few more unnatural looking reds like scarlet red, um, alizarin crimson, those kinds of things and also that light magenta tone as well. Whereas the leaves I used a few more of the natural reds like Venetian red, um, the cinnamon, um, there was also that Pompeian, I don't know how to say that one, Pompeian red, um, just a lot more of those kind of more natural looking tones rather than the unnatural looking tones. I used an unnatural orange of, I think it was cadmium orange or orange glaze, but that just helped with, combined with those more natural reds, just created a really lovely leafy autumnal tone and I'm really pleased with the outcome of the leaves because they're not competing with the reds of the mushrooms, which was my aim here. As I was adding in the leaves and everything, I'm also adding in some more of these blades of grass and because everything was kind of it wasn't blurry but it wasn't as in focus as the mushrooms I made sure that I bled some of the colours into one another so some of those blades of grass I kind of did the initial blade of grass and then I added a halo of green around the outside of that so that it could blend into the surrounding areas and not be so sharp and distinct and that's a really good tip if you want to create kind of blurry looking images is just to make sure that you add a halo of that colour around the object that you're drawing to make sure that it's not really sharp and in focus. I'm using that trick of using the reds and the greens combined to create shadows for the little bits of moss and soil that you could see in between some of the grass here. I really love using reds and greens on top of one another. It is literally my favourite thing. It's so much better than using a brown, than going in with walnut brown. I think Previously, like the beginning of my coloured pencil journey and figuring out colours and everything, I would use a lot of the ready-made browns and a lot of those ready-made pencils because obviously getting that pencil is a lot easier. But when you're adding in lots of layers of colour, you kind of end up with a more muddy looking area than what you initially anticipated by going in and using that ready-made brown. But using the primary and secondary colours and mixing them with one another and using uh, complementary colours and all of that jazz, you do create some really interesting tones and a more cohesive piece. So if you are looking at, maybe you're thinking, oh, this is looking a little bit too muddy or this isn't looking too good, I would recommend absolutely going in and finding some complementary colours and having a little practice and seeing what shadows and other tones you can come up with just by using a very limited palette. 
Finally, we're coming up to the end of the mushrooms and getting to the bit where I was really kind of not feeling this whole mossy section and it did take a little bit of working and fiddling about with, um, but eventually I got there to a point where it kind of fitted with the rest of the mushrooms and I was happy to call this done. But there you go. This is my mushroom piece. I'm really proud of it. I think it's my best piece that I have ever drawn. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And again, if you want to follow along with this on Patreon, follow the link in the description and you can view this in real time with all of the tips about complementary colours and everything that I gave in this short description. But I really hope that you have enjoyed this video and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye!